Hi, welcome to PMOD Monthly for October. This month we're talking about PMOD IP cores, which are IP blocks that are designed for easy drag and drop use into microblaze designs. Over 25 of our most popular PMODs now have dedicated IP cores. This includes various sensors, our Bluetooth module, as well as our Wi-Fi module. So now it's only a matter of minutes to add a wireless capability to any of our FPGA boards. Um, so Tommy, our applications engineer who designed a lot of these IP cores, is going to lead you through exactly how to go about implementing these in your Microblaze designs. Um, these new IPs allow you to use Vivado's IPI to just click and drag it straight into a Microblaze or Zinc design, uh, streamlining the process. If you've already got a Microblaze or Zinc design, it's really easy to implement. Uh, we'll be programming the PMON OLED RGB on both the Zebo and the Arty. So uh, we'll have a split screen, only follow whichever one you really need to. So uh, let's get started. So we're going to download Vivado library and Vivado boards from uh, the Digilink GitHub. You can see them here. Uh, we also have links below the video um, if you want to download them directly. Uh, extract these to a folder that you'll remember. Um, I have them saved in TommyWork slash GitHub and you can see them both right there. Now once you have Vivado boards downloaded, um, go into new and then copy the boards file, board files folder. Go into Xilinx, Vivado, 2015.4, data, boards, and then just paste them right here. And that'll merge the, uh, or that'll add the Digilent uh, board, board files to the uh, board files folder here. You can see there's already Basis 3, CMOD, Genesis 2. Um, and make sure you restart Vivado after doing this, or they won't pop up. So now that we have our new board files installed, go ahead and open up the Vivado 2015.4 and create a new project. Uh, name it whatever you want. I named my project PMODs. Uh, click Next, 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 and then click the boards and uh, select which board you're using. Here we'll be um, you can use either the Zebo or the Arty if you're following this tutorial, or use whatever board you have. Um, it should work with any Arctic 7. So now that we're in our new project, go ahead and click Project Settings. This will open the Project Settings box. Um, click IP, then Repository Manager. Then uh, click the little plus button. It should be either in the middle or on the left side. Navigate to where you saved your Vivado Library master folder and uh, click that folder. Click OK, then OK again. Um, it'll tell you how many IPs or interfaces that it added to your, uh, to your new library. Um, and press OK, and that's, uh, that's it. You've added your, uh, the new IPs and the interfaces. So we're going to start this video with a basic um, block design already created. So on the Zebo side, we're going to be starting with just a basic zinc block drop down, um, where on the Arty side, we'll have a basic microblaze system. Um, if you don't know how to get to this point, follow a link below to uh, get to a getting started guide with Microblaze for the Arty um, to get to this point. It's um, drop in a MIG, um, create a clock wizard, and add a Microblaze block, and, and you're there. With that, we'll continue. So with our basic design, we just have to open up our board tab on the left side and double-click connector JC. Here we'll see a list of all the PMONs that we've implemented so far. In this demo, we're going to be using the PMON OLED RGB, so uh, just double click that and it will automatically connect all the pins that you need. Now that that's in there, do, uh, click Run Connection Automation um, and it'll connect your AXI light buses. Now we need a clock for the external spy clock. Uh, this uses a 50 MHz clock, so in Zinc, we'll double click the Zinc block and click Clock Configurations and add an extra clock in the PL fabric clock, so that's 50 megahertz. Um, whereas on the Arty side, in Microblaze, we just double click Clock Wizard, um, click Output Clocks, and uh, add a 50 megahertz clock as Clock Out 3. Connect this 50 megahertz clock to external spy clock on the PMOD OLED RGB block, and uh, verify and we're done. Save it, create a system wrapper, and create the bitstream. Now the zinc, uh, 
the Zebo design is going to synthesize much faster than the Arduino design because the microblades is all done in hardware. Um, so sit tight if you're using an Arduino. Now that the bitstream is created, we will export the hardware. Make sure you click include bitstream. Now click file and launch SDK to open SDK, Xilinx SDK. Now that we're in Xilinx SDK, uh, we'll click new application project, uh, name it whatever you want. I named it OLED RGB demo. This is your hardware platform, make sure it's system wrapper. Um, you shouldn't have to change any of these settings. All right, click next and then click empty application to make sure that you're starting with nothing else and click finish. So now that that's finished, uh, we have two new folders here, OLED RGB demo, this is your actual project, and OLED RGB demo underscore BSP, which includes um, all the library files for our uh, PMOD OLED RGB. Um, here is the PMOD OLED RGB dot C file. Um, this includes all the functions that you'll, uh, that, that work on the, um, on the PMOD. Uh, you can look through these, um, change anything if you want. So now that we understand what that is, uh, we can go into our drivers file under system wrapper. Um, open up drivers, PMOD OLED RGB, um, and examples. Now you're going to copy these two files into your source file. Now this is, the, this is the example project that we include. Double click main.c to open it up and uh, see what it'll do. This is just a basic design to get you guys started programming on the uh, OLED RGB. Here we uh, initialize it with OLED RGB underscore begin. These XPAR variables are uh, pound defined in the X parameters uh, .h file. Um, you can find these by typing XPAR and then holding control and pressing space. This will allow you to look through all the different devices you have connected. In this case we're going to be using the base addresses so uh, that's already set up, so you don't you do not have to worry about this. You can type OLED RGB underscore and hold Control and press Space as autocomplete to see all the different functions that we have created for the OLED RGB. This ranges from draw pixel to adjust backlight to set scaling or font color or anything that you really need to do. So now we understand what our demo does. We'll click Xilinx Tools and click Program FPGA, or click this button here. And then click Program, and it'll program your Zebo or Arty with uh, the bit file that we created back in Vivado. Now that we have our FPGA configured with the bit file, um, we're going to click the OLED RGB demo folder on the left side here, and then click Run As. Click Launch as Hardware, System Debugger, and click OK. Save anything if you've changed it. When it's done programming, you should see a small text demo, then my face pop up on the screen. We're currently working on creating more IPs for more of our PMODs, um, so if you'd like to see any specific PMOD implement as an IP, uh, leave a comment below. We hope you found the video tutorial useful. You can find all Digilent IP as well as the PMOD IP cores on the Digilent GitHub, so check the description below this video for that link, and please subscribe to stay up to date on Digilent's products and services. Thanks.